I wish I could have said, in loving memory of Francis Jane Rakita Pavlik Shrum, April 17, 1930 to April 16, 2018. Dobri den, good day, slender man, in the photograph, simply dressed, farmer tanned, looking as quiet as mother described. A tranquil day, grassy knoll, contently sitting, elbows on your knees, a newspaper in hands between. After a hard day's work on a Pennsylvania farm, pipe in mouth, glasses round, I squint my eyes to read the newspaper headline, wishing I knew more of my mother tongue beyond Dobri Den or Trobish, like my mother used to say whenever she asked, what are you doing? Grandfather, did you die alone in the barn near the cows? My mother still a teen? To hear from your lips random words like machka, cat, riba, fish, would more than suffice this need to know unanswered questions the living only children, or nearly so, when you died cannot answer. Dobri den, robust woman, twelve children to feed. No wonder your feet are swollen, your flesh covered in stocking seep through straps of Mary Jane's. Chair baby on your knee, its chubby hands as thick as your physique, from all that good Slavic cooking, pierogi, cabbage rolls, and poppy seed, just as mother recreates. Calmly you sit upon a rocking chair, artificially placed outside, near a fence and sapling trees, an old-fashioned photograph of you and your child. I wonder who else was there to see you meekly smile? Grandmother, did you die in your bed, all your children at your side, the slender man holding tears? My mother not yet twelve. To hear from your lips random words like machka, riba, would more than suffice this need to know Unanswered questions the living, only children, or nearly so, when you died, cannot answer. Dobri den, dear grandfather, grandmother, I never knew. I stood by your graves atop a grassy knoll in the quiet town of Blairsville. Anna, mother, Stephen, senior, father. Your first son, Stephen, junior, died alone in the barn near the cows. A photograph of a family farm and set into his headstone after living a length of life I wish all could live. Anne, Peter, Paul, Victoria, Margaret, buried where? Mary, still living, 99 at the time. Josephine, fun-loving Josephine, served in World War II. In the grocery, she would laugh. They didn't let the women do the things women could do. Veterans of war as well, Steve, John, Victoria too and my mother, Frances Jane, stayed home, working in a factory of tear gas bombs. Long moved to Michigan, I knew her best, naturally. She'd give you her sandwich or her shirt if you wished. My greatest teacher of living well, God's gift of love within her swell. Aunt Teresa, the youngest, chair baby photographed the only one still near where they were all born, served us cake, sweet cake with frosting fluffy high, and brought me to the cemetery, St. Simon and Jude, after a visit to the Kanama Dam, sweet Teresa, only love in her hands. I saw your graves and looked upon a photo of a sanitation truck inset, marked a son named John and daughter Helen down below where poison ivy grows, set apart by a husband who poisoned her for money, my aunt wondering surmised. I bet God planted it, she quipped as she gestured to the ivy. Maybe it is true, maybe not. Answers never clear to those whose love cannot cross boundaries only man sets apart from God's one powerful love. These disjoint pieces, a puzzle of lies disrupted, hard to tell the lies from the truths, unanswered questions, the living, only children, or nearly so, 
when you died. The ship grandmother took across the Atlantic in 1909, from where in Europe at the age of 19. Is it the right Ellis Island record? Why you left the way you met separately did grandfather cross? Who might be left behind? Ancestors, relatives still alive? Elegant and stoic, side by side you sit. Such a lovely couple in a wedding photograph. A backdrop of ornate drapery and the surrounding people. Beautiful, soulful eyes, all unknown except to you. Is that your brother, same dimple in his chin? Even the way you dressed, unfamiliar, historic, ripens my desire to know. How did it feel to be buttoned in clothing to your chins? Did learning English make your family seem dumb, called names like Pollock, Bohunk? Peter and Paul stoned on the way to school, kicked out by the nuns, uneducable, they said, because they were too afraid to talk. Your first farm, the government claimed against your family's will, flooded to build Kanama Dam. Did you argue in English or make an older child speak for you in protest? Or did you quietly acquiesce, all 14 of you hand in hand? Descriptions of furniture lost, the vague layout of the house, the sadness of what might have been along Black Lick Creek. And now without you, the 12 children lost, Aunt Mary, the mother hen, Steve, the farm hand. Through the Great Depression, sugar rationed, shoes worn out, but lucky to be hardworking farmers, never unfed. Aunt Anne moving out, considering herself rich, Margaret and Vicky frolic to a New Jersey beach. And quiet, hardworking Uncle Steve, never married, dear John Letter, broken heart, alone, kept the family farm till he died, working in the barn, a half million dollars in cash unspent, yet used an outhouse with a Kellogg's cornflake witch below a moon vent fields of cows needing to be fed. The twin brothers, Peter and Paul, honest men, whose fear commenced, lived respectively in a trailer in a car. What could have been? Uncle John, honest living, fulfilling a need few would last, proud of his truck that pumped crap. Leaving Josephine and Teresa, bright spirits of good intentions, a love for laughter, flowers and animals, and food for love of family. But if not for my mother, Frances Jane, who enriched my life insurmountably blessed, I wouldn't have stood atop the highest point of Chestnut Ridge, where twelve children mourned, mourned your passing. To see a memorial made of stone, straight line from where you lay to rest, a statue of a woman fully clothed, buttoned to her chin, as if man wished time stand still. Wanting her alive back in time long gone by, easily I stepped to touch her marbled side, to recreate the past, Dobre den, I said to her. But headstones never speak, leave no answers to unanswered questions. But to hear from your lips random words like machka riba would more than suffice. But this need, like stone, weathers and erodes. Grace of God, may humankind's earthly desires tremble and ignite. Why the fight to hold on to what we love with such might? Consider this. Cemetery is spelled with three E's. Eternally, eternally, eternally. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. On 2018, April 16th, my dear mother died near noon on the same date of her mother's birth. Only Sister Teresa remains, so I call. Her voice, her laugh, her smile I cannot see. She comforts me as God's love dwells profusely between. My mother's greatest gift 
Feel the warmth of water at a kitchen sink. Know God's presence in even this. Go outside. Feel the rush of winter's air in the April spring. When the morning brings a layer of fresh snow, take into hand new onions to sow. For the harvest of fall will come and someone will need to eat. It's good for you, eat. Take in the nourishment of this earth. It is good. Care for others, fulfill their needs. Everything of this earth belongs to God. That was my sign. Everything will be okay. I told my father when he called to say, your mother has passed away. It's the words we agonize to hear. The words were crystal clear. In my mailbox the next day on my mother's birthday, a day after she had died, addressed to me from her sister was a pink birthday card with a stamp marked with an angel and a message, God is love. I entered my house, set the card aside, struck by a sign I didn't want to see. Others saw robins agitated in the year's record lows, as signs of hope in her recent passing. April 2018 was the United States' coldest April in 21 years, a news report said. Feed them raisins to sustain them is what the news advised. Too cold for them to survive. The robins made me cry. The warmth of spring refused to come the year my mother slowly died, and it wasn't at all like the words you sometimes read. Died peacefully in her sleep, surrounded by family and friends, suffering like Christ on the cross, much longer than he, a libation, a sacrifice for a life lived long in human time, but never long enough in love measured on earth. A cowbird hit the window, lifeless on the snow. Like my mother who saved lives, more lives than some know, I had to try, resuscitate that frozen bird. I reached outdoors to cup it in my hands, held it warm, tenderly, its eyes seemed to see. Peekaboo, I love you, I had said into my mother's right blue eye. That last morning, the day she died. With a towel moistened with warm milk, her angel nurse advised, the morning of the day my mother died, wipe her glue stuck eyes so she can see. <laughs> Peekaboo, I love you. <laughs> My mother's eyelid opened, looked at me knowingly, assuring blue, like the blue of snow. Deep into eyes, bird and mother, I looked for signs. Would you come back if I tried? If I prayed hard enough, praying, knowing, with God's love, the impossible is possible. But no, in human terms, conditional, limited and limited, in God's hands is the only probable. Nevertheless, like a child, I prayed for their lives. I prayed desperately, breathing breaths for them. I pressed a feathered, weathered chest ready to take flight. I knelt on the kitchen floor and cried like a child, desperate to hold tightly onto life, as if the lesson taught as a child was finally true. Death is permanent. Death is permanent. I am younger than her, but even I knew death is permanent. Love is letting go, letting go, letting God. Love is letting go, letting go, letting God. Everything of this earth belongs to God. Love enough to let go. One with God is my mother, and her mother, and her father, and her brothers and sisters too. Her little baby and all others who have gone before. 
one with God, eternally, 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 like a bird, we will go. Frances Jane, in her ways, knew God, even on this earth, as she loved deeply, effortlessly, selflessly, eternally. Be with God, Frances Jane. Be with God, all who remain. Be with God and his love. We are one in his love. Eternally, eternity, eventually you. One with God is love. Love with others grow. When we know God is love.